Hey, what's going on friends? It's Jonathan. Welcome back to another JC production. Today, I wanna go over the first 20 apps I install on every iPhone that I get. And with that being said, I'm gonna leave you with this question before we even dive into this video. What are the five most important apps, the apps that you immediately download as soon as you get a new phone? And it could be an iPhone, or an Android phone, I'm going to exclude any social networking application. So if you use Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, things like that, make sure those are not in your five apps because obviously if you use those services, you're gonna download those apps. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into this and take a look at the first 20 apps I installed on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. So I'm going to start at the top here and then just work my way down. Going into utilities, the very first thing is mobile security from Bitdefender. You guys know how I feel about Bitdefender. I don't need to get into detail about that. I'm going to leave a link down below that will give you a free 90 day trial to total security and mobile security comes free with that. The reason why I have it on all of my phones is because of this. The premium VPN is really legit. Plus you get built in web protection. This is going to scan websites to make sure that there's no phishing or fraud attempts. Basically, it's giving you the abilities of a desktop antivirus uh, software right here on your mobile phone. And I really appreciate that. So moving on, LastPass is my password manager of choice. You guys know about LastPass. It's similar to Dashlane. I just have been using LastPass since like 2011. Like it's been a long time. So I'm a big fan of LastPass. Next up is Google Home. Now, Google Home is how I control all of my smart home devices. So I converted all of my smart home stuff over to the Google Assistant platform. It's really nice to have a very clean app that I can control all of my smart home devices, as well as set up routines and all that good stuff. So the next thing is Google Assistant. The reason why I have Google Assistant on my phone is because of Siri shortcuts. So let me show you this. So if I trigger Siri, hey Google, What is the difference between cheese and milk? According to difference between I got two different Google assistants going. That one back there and this one right here. That was a fail. Moving on, we have um, on the other side here, Google Calendar. Now, the reason why I have Google Calendar is because of the widget. That's the only reason why I'm using it. When it comes to the Apple Calendar app, it just doesn't function properly for me. It doesn't display all of my events in the widget. Instead, it's only gonna give me events that have a scheduled time and not all day events. This isn't anything new by any means, but they just haven't fixed it. And even if you have to touch or do the uh, force touch on the calendar icon, like it's giving me an event that is scheduled for October 8th. But if you go into my calendar, you can see the next event is today. So it, it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. The next thing is Feedly. Feedly is my news app of choice. And now that it has a dark mode, it is legit. So this is how I get all of my, you know, tech news and even local news and just things that are going on around the world. Feedly, I go back and forth with because sometimes it's really good and other times it's buggy. But for the most part, as of late, it's been really consistent. So I'm going to stick it out. And then for my to do's, I'm using things. So when it comes to things three, I really like it. I love the interface. The dark or black mode is really nice and it works great, but it's very expensive if you're trying to get the entire experience. So it's 10 bucks for the iPhone app and then it's 20 bucks for the iPad app and then like 50 bucks for the desktop app. And that's only if you have a Mac and there's no cross platform capabilities. So this is how I keep track of all of my to do's as well as create list. So I can go down here and create like a new project or new area and then add things down here to that specific project or area. So if I'm going on a trip, I can create like a new project and title it uh, New York trip. And then I can put all of my to do stuff in here, such as items that I'm going to bring or maybe different places I want to see stuff like that. The next few apps are inside my photo and video folder. The first being Filmic Pro. If you are in any way, shape or form a mobile videographer, you do a lot of video on your smartphone. Filmic Pro is worth every single penny. So diving into the app, you can see just how much creative control you have with this thing. Going into the settings here, you can adjust your resolution. You could change it from 1080p all the way up to 4K. However, you can also adjust the quality of that 4K, aka the bit rate. You can also adjust your frame rate. You can adjust your audio. You could pick the microphone that's picking up the audio. So right now it was on the back mic, but you can assign the front mic. You can do the bottom mic. That's pretty next level stuff. 
You can also pick the file formats. So right now it's on PCM. You could do AIFF and you could do AAC. You could pick the kilohertz that it's actually picking up and you can hook up a Bluetooth mic. Plus there's so much more. You can do video only, so no audio at all. You can do video processing, automatic gain control, or you can do manual gain control by turning that off. Just a ton of possibilities when it comes to audio pickup. You also have the ability to hook up other devices to this device for a remote control if you wanted to do multicam with multiple iPhones or iPods, which if you want a video on that, I definitely don't mind doing. I've looked into it and it looks really interesting. Then you have different hardware that you can hook up to this thing like the Moby Cinema robot, which is this guy right here. That thing is a beast. Bouncing out of Filmic Pro, we're gonna start diving into some of my photo stuff. The very first one is Lightroom. I don't care what phone you give me. As long as I can download Lightroom, that's gonna be the very first photo application I download. And it's not even because of the editing tools, it's actually because of the cloud library. So as you can see, these are all of my photos on all of my phones. Any device that I have Lightroom installed on, it's going to back up my photos just like Google Photos would. However, since this is Lightroom, I can access it on my computer much easier because it's gonna pull up in the desktop version of Lightroom. And it's just another benefit of having an Adobe CC subscription. Another great thing about the Lightroom mobile app is that it supports all different types of raw image formats. So as you can see, some pictures say raw. These were actually captured with the Sony a6400, which is a mirrorless camera. However, they're popping up right here inside of my Lightroom CC library, which is really, really cool. And I can pull them up and I can start editing just like they were on my phone. So if I wanna save a picture, I can always transfer it from the cloud to my phone. It's not an issue. And then I can bring it into the next app, which is Visco. Visco, I have been a subscriber now for a little bit and I love it. It is 20 bucks a year, but it is well worth it if you do a lot of photography, especially when it comes to social media. Visco provides you with tons of different filters and my process is always to start in Lightroom and then I'll edit a photo and then take it over to Visco and apply one of my presets. One thing many people don't realize is that Visco actually supports video, not just photos, and it's really neat. So if we go to import photo, I could pick out a video, import it, and I can apply one of the same filters that are inside of Visco for their photos to this video. There's no limitations. Like I literally can apply the same exact filter. Everything that's available for photos is also available for video inside of Visco, which makes it one of the most powerful video editors when it comes to color and creating a look. So moving right along, the last app I have inside of my photo and video folder is Retouch. Retouch is a fantastic app at removing an object from your photo. You can see right here, there's like a little plug sticking out of my wall, which is actually the Amplify HD Gamers Edition mesh point. So I'm going to remove that because it doesn't look too good. So we're gonna go to object removal and then just paint over that object like so, and then tap go and boom, it's gone. It does a fantastic job and for four bucks, you really can't beat it. It's a toss up for me between this and then just adding the Photoshop app because the Photoshop app does the same thing. However, the biggest difference here is that with the Photoshop app, you do have to have a subscription to Adobe CC, but I wanted to give you guys something that you can buy that you don't have to pay like a monthly premium for. Bouncing back and going into my productivity folder, we have OneNote from Microsoft. Microsoft OneNote is how I collect my thoughts. It's part of my Microsoft Office subscription. However, you can download OneNote on its own for free and start using it. So it's a great way to stay organized. As you can see right here, I have two of my notebooks opened. I have my personal notebook and then I have my YouTube related notebook. If I tap on the YouTube notebook, these are all the sections that I have. And you can also group sections. So right here are video topics. Um, these are broken into device categories. And then under that section will be my video ideas. So this is how I try to stay as organized as possible, even though my brain is completely scattered half of the time. Anytime I get an idea, I just write it directly into my OneNote notebook and just keep it moving. Backing out, we have Cheat Sheet. Cheat Sheet is phenomenal. I love it. It's new to my phone and it will never leave it from now on unless they get rid of the app like Newton did. But anyways, Cheat Sheet is a great tool for capturing random pieces of information that you might need to access on the fly. Reason being is because it keeps a widget right here and I can go in and then add something, say like my hotel room number and then back out and you'll see it right here in my widgets. Whenever I'm done with that information, I can just tap on it and delete it and now it's gone. 
Again, it's just a convenience factor when it comes to this, being able to capture ideas, thoughts, and information on the fly. Uh, the next app is OneDrive. OneDrive, I really don't need to get into. You guys know what OneDrive is. It's cloud-based storage that Microsoft provides. The next app is Google Drive. Several links get shared with me and I have to share files with other people. And since a lot of people don't use OneDrive, uh, it's more universally accepted and that's why I have Google Drive. Uh, we have YouTube and YouTube Studio. Those have to be on there. It's my job. I want to stay up to date on content and I want to be able to check out to see how well my videos are performing. Spotify is my music app of choice, but I am thinking about switching back to Apple Music and giving it another shot. Next up, I have Launch. If you're familiar with Siri shortcuts, it's very similar, but instead of calling them shortcuts, they call them actions. So you can create different actions for different apps or even system operations. So the first example I'm gonna give you is right here where it says Katie Messages. This is a group that I created that has messages that I can send my wife that I don't have to type out and it will send them on the fly. And I can also schedule those messages. So if I hold my finger down, I have a good morning. This is going to send my wife a good morning text. As you can see right here, it says, good morning, babe. I hope you have a good day. I love you. But what makes this really powerful is if I go in and then edit this, I can schedule it to do every single morning or the mornings that she's at work and I don't see her. So that way this text will get sent to her whether I send it manually or not. And what's really cool is I can go in and create multiple texts for every day of the week. So instead of saying good morning, I can have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday and have a different message for every day of the week and then automate those. So even if I forget because I get busy, it will still get sent and she'll feel special that day. And I like that. So going back home and taking a look at my final app, it is Spark. Spark is my email app of choice right now. I love Newton, but they can't seem to update their apps and their support just sucks. So I had to ditch them and I've been pretty content with Spark. I do have my issues. It's not as good as Newton in my personal opinion. And I tried to use a stock iOS mail app and just no. In any case, Spark is a great app. It's free, it's nice to look at, it's very responsive, plus it's cross-platform, which I can definitely appreciate. Another great thing about Spark is just how much control you have over your inbox. You can create templates, you have email scheduling, you have Siri shortcuts, and you can also change the way that your emails look by adjusting the font size, the font type, adding bold font, italic font, and you can even create a link out of a word. So it's really, really great to see this feature set inside of a free email app and I can definitely recommend it. Well, friends, that was the first 20 apps I installed on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to comment down below and answer the question that I asked you at the beginning of this video. Also, let me know what other iPhone 11 related videos do you wanna see? If you guys enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content just like this, click the bell to enable notifications so you can be alerted when that content drops. Hit me up on social if you feel like chatting and I will talk to you amazing people in the next video.